Great news, everyone. Today, we're going to be starting a new unit. This unit is R092, Developing Digital Games. For some of you, this is a chance to show off some of your more technical skills, such as coding. But for some of you, we're going to be doing this purely as paper-based exercise, depending on the resources you've got. I'm going to talk through the game that we're going to eventually create and set your tasks for this week. So, by the end of this video, you should understand the scenario that's been set. Hopefully, you'll be able to interpret the client brief and explain who the target audience is. The scenario on the side of the page is to develop a digital game called Nonstop Noah. Now, Nonstop Noah is a brand new game by 101010 Studios. They would like you to create what they define as an endless runner style game. This is a game where the player must keep moving forwards while jumping on various moving platforms. There's going to be various levels, but you'll only need to create or design one of these. Below that is the game brief. This is a fairly standard style document that you would receive if you were creating a first draft of a game. We've got the synopsis and objectives, that there are four levels for the player, Noah, to run through. We've got a theme for each of those four levels. A brief idea of what's going to happen, so the player will keep running until they're either knocked off screen or they fall off a platform. The score will go up so long as they're still in the screen and the player can only jump. So they can't do anything else, there is no other controls. Now the game is going to be based on the objectives above. It should be aimed at 10 to 16 year olds, should have feature appropriate amount of assets and objects and characters, and there should be some instructions that appear on the screen. Now for the purposes of this unit, when we come on to making the game, I will be giving you all of the uh, images that you'll need to create the game. But that doesn't mean that you have to stick with them. You can choose to use your own at that point if you wish. I'm going to start by telling you what the game's going to look like. We're going to use a piece of software called GDevelop5. If you've got access to a laptop or a computer, GDevelop5 is a free downloadable tool which will allow us to create a simple platform game. You can also run it in your browser. So as long as you've got access to the internet, you will be able to complete this unit. However, for those of you who are using, let's say, a mobile phone to follow and complete these tasks, rather than leaving you out of this unit, you're going to have a slightly different production where you will be designing the graphics. And this can be done by hand by drawing them on paper. I've already made a draft of what the game will look like, basically. Um, I'm going to play a short video, which I recorded earlier. So as you can see, I've got my Noah character, and he's running across the screen with platforms that will appear. If he does stop at any point, then the uh, platforms catch up with him, and uh, he'll get knocked off. And then that means he'll basically be killed on the game. The higher the score is for however many platforms he manages to get across in the time span. It should be quite simple. It will take you about an hour to program something like this, even if you've never used the program at all. So, every unit always starts with L01, but we're not being assessed on L01 this time around. That's because in Creative Eye Media, L01 is usually a research-based task about looking into uh, the, sort of some aspect of the media that we're, we're investigating this time. I don't want you to do that now. Um, it's a bit of a waste of time to do that as a distance task, and also, it would be very similar for other projects, and I don't want you to be caught up with any sort of plagiarism. That said, I will be adding um, information about how to cover L01 on a future video and on my website. So moving straight from L01 to L02. L02 is planning your digital game. For this task, we're not gonna be completing all of L02, just the area in this green box here. This section is all about your client and target audience. Now we have already done this in a previous unit in R082, and it may be familiar with for you. If you need lots of extra help, I strongly suggest checking out that video as well as this one. But for now, we're gonna cover the basics of what's needed, and I'm gonna give you some ideas to get started. The first thing we need to do is to identify the client requirements. Very simply, the client requirements are all the things that our client wants in the game. You're gonna find this information in the brief. 
there are various different things here that the client is asking for. For instance, the game must be called Nonstop Noah. It's one of the requirements that has been set. It also needs to be some form of endless runner style game. It needs to have four levels, although you'll only need to create one of these. And those levels must be in one of these styles here. The game itself should just involve running until someone is knocked off the screen or they fall off a platform. And the score will go up so long as the player is still in the game. The only control is to jump. The game should be aimed at 10 to 16 year olds and have appropriate assets for that group and for that genre of game. Now that we've got that information, we've pretty much got our client requirements. Writing this information here, colored in yellow, up into sentences or bullet points will mean that I've now got the client requirements I need for this task, and also that will help me in LO4 when I need to review them. In terms of the target audience, well, for that, we're gonna to need to really be a little bit more imaginative. The target audience is only really specified here. Well, 10 to 16 year olds is quite a bland, generic genre. We don't really know much about that group. And for this task here, it would be expected that perhaps you were to do your own investigations of games aimed at similar groups of, of uh, children and the sorts of graphics or content that you would see in it and whether or not it's appropriate for games like this. There are certainly games that this age group play that would probably have no impact on this. And especially at this point, we wouldn't necessarily be talking too much about 18 certificate first person shooter games. They're nothing relevant to this task. So what is a game that is aimed at this age group? Even if it said had a Peggy free rating. FIFA has a Peggy free. Is that a game aimed at 10 to 16 year olds? Well, probably yes, I'd say yes. So what could we know about our target audience? By reading about this game, some of you may even start to think about the sort of uh, games console that I might see this on. It feels to me like quite a simple game. The sort of thing that I might perhaps see on mobile phone. If I'm seeing a game on mobile phone, what sort of things would I expect to see in it? Would I have microtransactions? Would I have some sort of season pass? Would I have anything else that can be monetized in the game? Something to think about and definitely something that your target audience would want to know about. And that really takes us into what the game's going to look like and our similar choices. By imagining the style of the art, we can start to think about what our graphics are initially going to look like. We've only really been given one section here where we're talking about what the style is. We know it's going to need to feature these zones here. So is it going to be very colourful? Is it going to be cartoonish? Is it going to be very realistic looking? This is all choices that you'll want to make at this particular point. Lastly, whenever we do research, especially in sort of a game genre, we want to work out what are our competitors. Are there other endless runner style games? And if they are, what do they look like? What sort of things do they have in there? And for this task here, you would potentially be asked to do some research on YouTube or the internet to find an equivalent. For this week's task, I would like you to find out the answers to these four using this brief and to write your answers up. For my students, we will be putting this onto a Word document or PowerPoint file and submitting this on Microsoft Teams. You can also send me a link on Show My Homework. For those of you out there on the internet, Please submit your work the way that your teacher has asked you. Good luck, and I can't wait to see what games you design.